What's up guys, Mr. Ben Burns here for the future and today we are going to talk about picking the best domain name for your portfolio. So this episode is sponsored by Porkbun. Porkbun is an amazingly awesome domain name registrar based out of Portland, Oregon. They're different, easy, and affordable. Check them out at porkbun.com. So what is this? This is practical advice about staking your claim in the digital realm. Picking a domain name is vitally important to, you know, the whole process of creating a business online. And if you've ever asked yourself these questions like, how do I pick the right domain name? Or what do I do if the .com domain is already taken? You know, should I use my name or should I try and create a brand? Do I even need a portfolio domain name when it comes to, you know, sites like Behance and a lot of these other portfolio systems that, that are out there? So today we're gonna to try and answer those questions. But first, let's start off with a little bit of branding and domain name strategy. So ultimately, choosing your domain name is a relatively subjective decision, but following basic guidelines can help your users find you easier. And we all know that ease of use equals great UX, and a delightful user experience equals more conversions. So let's get into the rules. All right, rule one, make it short. No one wants to type in a long domain name. It's very frustrating and it's even more frustrating when it comes to writing your email address on that card that you wanna drop in the free lunch pail at the restaurant. Make it easy to spell. There's nothing worse than trying to guide someone through uh, you know, spelling that domain name. So you wanna make it easy to say. There's nothing worse than having a difficult to pronounce domain name. You also wanna make it easy to remember you should have something that you can own, something that's gonna stand out from the crowd. And the last one, make it yours. Make it something that you believe in, whether it's your personal name or a brand name, make it something that you can you know, stand behind. Guys, to be honest, the, the whole reason we're shooting this video is because in all of the portfolio submissions that we get, and we get a lot of them, I'm noticing a trend and that the domain names are getting longer and more difficult to say and more difficult to remember. And sometimes when we're filming, especially portfolio reviews, pulling up people's domain names is, is tough because you wanna remember it, but it just doesn't come out or we misspell it because it's difficult to spell. So that's the whole reason why we're shooting this video. So you have to ask yourself, does your domain name break a rule? Or are you stuck on like trying to figure out a domain name idea? So if you're stuck trying to develop ideas for domain names, there's four tactics, four strategies that you can use uh, to help develop ideas. So the four rules are pretty simple. Number one, use a brand or a business name. Number two, use your personal name. Number three, use localized keywords. Or four, try out a new domain extension. Let's dig into the pros and cons of using each. And we'll start off with the first one, using a business or a brand name. Now your pros is, it can be a little bit more professional. Um, you can project a larger presence by having a brand name. And it's perfect if you already have a brand name or a business name. Now, this helps users find you if they search for your brand name, but it's not going to help with you know, the more organic search because you don't have a keyword in your business name. If you're using your portfolio for job hunting or landing freelance gigs, it can be kind of weird for somebody who hires people to be looking at a brand name versus somebody's personal website. There's a lot of ways to skin that cat. You know, you can use your first and last name, .com, .design, whatever, or you can use just your last name, or you can throw a title in there like I do. I am Mr. Ben Burns pretty much everywhere. So bottom line is it's you. You should own your domain name for your personal name anyway. And a great pro is that unique names are often available. And this is great for job hunting and freelance gigs and resumes. On the flip side, common names are typically taken, especially in the dot-com world. And some people have really tough names to spell. I'm looking at you, Mike Wazowski. Using your personal name as the domain name for your agency or your portfolio may communicate a smaller presence. It may position yourself as a smaller entity than you'd like to be. All right, the third strategy, using localized keywords. Now, these are things like the best Florida design.com or uh, Los Angeles logo design.com. 
Now, the great thing about this is it's gonna help with organic search, especially for local clients. So a lot of the complaints that we get is, I can't find clients locally. And you know, a lot of times people will search best logo design in Los Angeles, California. So this can help out a lot with that. And it's tough to be confused here. With blind.com, you know, we get people that are inquiring about their household blinds, like literally window coverings. So cons, it can kind of come off a little car salesman-ish. Maybe it's a personal preference or a personal perspective that I bring, um, but when I see best logo design Los Angeles, I kind of expect a lower quality site. All right, number four, this is my favorite. Use new domain extensions. We're talking about domain extensions like .art, .agency, and my favorite, .design. Now, the pros, this combines your brand or your name with a keyword, so it's kind of the best of both worlds. So many common terms and brands are widely available because they're so new. Dot .design has only been on the market for a couple of years, so it's a good chance that your name is available. It also gives your users context without naming to explain. You wanna have a name that identifies, not explains, but with a domain name, with one of these new extensions, you can give your users some great context. So benburns.design, somebody's gonna know that this is a designer. It's built into the domain name. Here's some of the disadvantages of these new domain extensions. Now, people expect a .com and it may require some explanations, but you can use this as kind of an opportunity to brand yourself. And unfortunately, some new extensions can lengthen your domain name. I think that the advantages of using these new extensions far outweigh the disadvantages in this case. So even though your domain name might be a little bit longer, it will also give you know a lot of context and all of the pros that we just talked about. But honestly, guys, here's my approach. I use all of the above. I would recommend starting with one of these new extensions like .design and then also purchasing a .com, .net, uh, .nyc, .agency and then point all of those domains to your .design name. That way you have the security of owning a lot of different versions of your brand name. Another added bonus is that if somebody accidentally types in .com or .net, it'll redirect right to your website. I'm sure you guys have all faced this, the dot-com problem. What happens when you get robbed? What happens when somebody steals your dot-com domain name extension? Well, let me walk you through this step-by-step. Step. First, you wanna check, is the brand name taken? Meaning, is somebody using your name in the industry that you're in? So if you're a designer, is another designer using your brand name? If so, you probably wanna go back to the drawing board and pick a new brand name, especially if they're already established in the space. Second, check if the site is in use. A lot of times these domain names will be taken, they'll be unavailable, but they're also up for auction. So if you do a little bit of digging and you see that this domain name is, you know, it's just taken but it's not being used, it's a good chance you can get a good deal on your domain name. So the third, check if new extensions are available. Your .com may be taken, but something like .design or .agency might be available. Let's be honest guys, .biz and .net, they're still lame. And you have to ask yourself, are you really a .org? That's why I like domain extensions like .design, .agency, .art. So the last thing that you can try is adding actionable verbs in front of your brand name. So we see this a lot with the word try. So it's like try blind, try the future. Adding something action oriented right there in the beginning can help get that user into the site quicker. All right guys, here's a quick list of things to watch out for and things to try to avoid. Number one, dashes, hyphens, and numbers. Any kind of special characters that you use is generally a no-go, and I am definitely guilty of that. Uh, when I bought our first domain name, it was burnt-creative, and that drove me up a wall. No dashes. Purposefully misspelled words. I know, I know, it's a little bit of the pot calling the kettle black, but still, if you purposefully misspell words, you're asking for disaster when it comes to trying to communicate your domain names to your customers. Yeah, it's the future, uh, but just with no E. No, no, there's an E in the, just not in the future. Acronyms, just avoid them. 
they're difficult to remember, it's, if, especially if it doesn't actually spell out anything and it's just a group of uh, letters and numbers. It's tough, no acronyms. Lengthy domains. I think we've beaten this one to death. Keep it short. Homonyms. This one's important. The perfect pair, spelled P-E-A-R, can often be confused with the perfect pair, spelled P-A-I-R. So watch out for homonyms. These are words that sound like other words. Accidental spellings. So if your brand name is multiple words, keep an eye on what it spells when those words are together. A company called IT Scrap, well, your domain name's gonna spell its crap. By now, you should have a whole bunch of ideas that you can use, and we are gonna get into a couple of different ways that you can test your domain ideas with the people that you know. But first, try and make up an email address belonging to your new domain and write it down four times. What it's gonna do is it's gonna indicate if the domain is too difficult to spell or if it's too long. I don't know if you've ever been in the doctor's office and filling out the paperwork and you've realized that your Gmail address is like 84 characters long, but that sucks. So write it four times and just, you know, just see if it's too long. The second trick, tell, which means say verbally, your domain name to 10 people and then watch them type it. Because that's gonna show you if it's easy to type, if it's easy to remember, and if it's easy to spell. So if your domain name passes all of these tests, it's time to register your domain. So let's get started. We're gonna walk you guys through this. To begin, pick a registrar of your choice, like GoDaddy or Namecheap. Now we like this little registrar called Porkbun, and that's what we're gonna be using today because not only are they our sponsors for this episode, but they're this great little company out of Portland, Oregon. And good news for you, our sponsor has a fantastic deal. $5 dot design domains for the first year. Now you can take a look at other extensions like dot art or dot agency, but we recommend snapping up a dot design domain. That way you can join companies like Facebook, Adobe, Amazon, and Airbnb who are all using dot design in some ways. So the first thing you need to do is check if your domain, your brand name is available. If you wanna follow along on Porkbun, just click the link below or head to porkbun.com forward slash future with, with no E. So you can see that the, the homepage loads here and we're gonna check if the future.design is available. And it is. And at this point, we have this great discount from, you can see here, it's, it's reflected $5 a year. So we'll go ahead and add that to our cart. And let's go to checkout. So checking out is really simple. It's like buying anything else that you buy online. And then once you're done, you'll have an opportunity to direct the domain to your current website. Let's go ahead and do that. And that's it. The domain is now registered. We own the future.design. So not only is Porkbun giving you guys a great deal on a .design domain name, they also want to see your creativity at work. So we have a little bit of a contest. What I want you guys to do is to develop some ideas for a domain name for Chris Doe's personal site, because right now he doesn't have one. So you're gonna come up with some ideas for Chris that really reflect his personality. And the funniest, the most creative two are going to win a dot design hoodie from Porkfun. So enter your submissions in the comments below and we'll see you next time guys. Thanks a bunch.